out in my favor. Hey, Pastor Jordan did an awesome job last week. Didn't he do an awesome job last week? And he talked about the position, and he talked about the posture. And, and one of the, the great guys that he spoke about was a guy named Stephen. And Stephen was one of the elected. He was one of the, uh, the men that were, that were chosen of the seven because he was ready to be put into the game. You know how you have those people that say, I'm ready to be put in the game, coach. He was ready to go in the game. And we know that Stephen was a faithful guy. But over in chapter seven, we see that Stephen is put on trial. And, and I want this to be our, our springboard scripture. It comes from Acts chapter 7, 54 through 55. And it says, when the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. I want to title this message today, I Am Fool. Put that down below. Say, I am fool. Put that, I am fool. I don't know what you're full of, but I hope that you came with an appetite. I pray that today that you came uh, ready to be filled up with something. I'm praying that there's an area of your life that may be dry, that God is going to pour some water and saturate that thing. I'm praying that today that God is going to allow you to be filled up and that you will be running over. For the Bible says that, that he, will, he will fill your cup to where it's running over, and, and when it's running over, it's going to spill out into the street. And so as we talk about I am full, we're talking about God filling us up with something. And we're going to talk deeper about, about that today. I am full. I'm full of grace. I'm, I'm full of love. I'm full of power. I'm full of a testimony. I'm full of power. I'm full of might. I'm full of strength. I am full with the Holy Spirit. Stephen is in a, in a predicament because he is now being judged without a fair trial. He's been preaching and, and he's been teaching and, and he's, he's been called upon and he's, he's answered the call and he's positioned well and his posture is well. But now he's in the game and he has to be activated. And when he stands on trial to be activated, we see that all hell breaks loose in his life. And I, I'm one of those people that, you know, I, I believe that what's in you is going to, to come out when you're uh, set to the fire, when your back is against the wall, when you're in a position where you have to, to go for the gust. So you have to do everything that's placed inside of you when you have to move forward. I believe that when you are full, what's in you will come out. So I love Sundays. Sundays is uh, one of my best days of the weekend. It's two reasons that I love Sundays. One, because I, I love being spiritually fed. I love the praise and worship. I love uh, being in the presence of God. I love being around the people of God. I love being where God is. And so I love getting spiritually fed. But another reason that I love Sundays, I really, really love, 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 love Sundays, is because I want some good food on Sunday. Anybody can attest to that? I love eating good on a Sunday. I think it's a sin to order a pizza on any Sunday. I think it's a sin to eat Chinese food on any Sunday. I believe that it is not uh, God's will that we should eat cereal on a Sunday. I believe in good meals on Sundays. And so one of my favorite meals, uh, I've, I've had some people prepare some food for me today, and one of my favorite meals that I, I just love to eat is I love soul food. I love some good soul food. I, I, I promise I could probably eat it uh, almost every day because I think it's healthy, even though sometimes we put a lot of sugar in some things. But, but one of my favorite meals uh, that I, I love to have is some good oxtails. Anybody ever had any good, good oxtails? And you may not be a meat eater, but I'll eat your plate for you on a Sunday because I believe in Sunday meals and dinner. And so this, this, uh, this oxtails, this, this, the meat that, that goes with it, I also got some greens here that's, that's really good. And I love eating greens. I, I love it because it's, it's nutritional and it's, it's healthy. I've also got some mac and cheese here. My wife told me, she said, when you get up there and you eat, don't take too large of a bite. But I cannot promise that I won't take a big Big bite, but this is my most favorite food in the world. So if you ever want to see Pastor Carlos, I don't know what to buy him, get me some yams. I love some good yams, and that's that's on the plate. And, and you got to have a piece of cornbread to finish it off, to put it on the meal. And I love eating this particular type of food on a Sunday. And if you've been over to my folks' house on Sundays, we normally go to my parents' house, and we eat. The next thing that I do after I am full is I'm going to go to, I'm going to sleep. 
I'm gonna take a nap because I'm I'm full and I and I love a uh, uh, food. I love what food does to people. It brings people together. It allows people to 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 come on one accord and and people that were angry with each other they then get around some soul food. You ever remember the movie Soul Food back in the day? And they would come to Big Mama's house and they would eat. And although they would be arguing when they started to eat, they, it changed their mind. It changed their whole perspective. It showed, It changed their 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 whole mentality. It changed everything about them because they began to focus on what they were eating. And so when I when I start to eat, I don't really eat in any particular uh, way, but I love eating yams, so I'll start with the yams first. That's good. It's got some um, brown sugar in it. It's, it's, um, it's sweet. The mac and cheese got, that's the three cheese. I think that's three cheeses inside of that. The, the meat is real tender, falling off the bones. That's good. Mm, that's, that's, that's seasoned well. Let's see what the grease. Let's see what they got. Mm, that's good. That's good. And the, the cornbread is good. Man, when you sit there and you can feast on, on, on a meal, it's great. Now, here's the issue that I have with soul food. Let me finish to them before my wife gets on me. Here's my issue with soul food is that I love soul food and I love to eat it, but here's the problem. After I eat soul food, about 10 minutes after I eat, I have this sensation that I have to throw up because I have acid reflux. And so after I know, I know it's coming, but the food is so good that I have to eat it and I cannot pass up a good meal. I can't say, okay, well, you know what, that's going to give me acid reflux. No, I have to eat it all. But I know that about 10 minutes after I eat, I'm going to get this real sick feeling. And sometimes I'll, I'll disappear. My family don't know uh, where I go, but I'll go outside and I'll go outside and I'll, I'll throw up because there's, there's this thing that I have called acid reflux. And acid reflux means that uh, there's the, the acidic things that, that go into your stomach, and they're not mixing well. And so this little flapper that's on the inside, it'll raise up. And when it raises up, it'll allow the food that you just ate to now come up. They can't so coincide together. They can't live together. And so you may take some antiacids. You may take uh, some ranitidine. These are all things that I had to take to make sure that I didn't throw up the food that I really, really love. But guess what? When I eat, I want to eat. And when I eat, I get full. But afterward, I may just have to throw up. And so any of y'all that, that love a good Sunday meal, type that down and say, me, just, just raise your hand and say, I love a good meal. I love to eat. I love to have a, a good home-cooked meal because it just brings us all together. And one of the things that I know about Stephen is Stephen feasted on the Word of God. Stephen was in a position and a posture where he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit fills you up, it fills you up with goodness. It fills you up with stories. It fills you up with power. It fills you up with faith. It fills you up to the point that when you have to throw up, whatever's in you is going to come out. And so when we look at uh, Stephen, Stephen is, is about to be on trial. And, and if we look at the scriptures, if we can go to um, Acts 6, 13 to, through 15, we go back a chapter. It says, they produce false witnesses who testified, this fellow never stopped speaking against this holy place and against the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place, change the customs Moses handed down to us. All of us were sitting in the Sanhedrin, looked intently at Stephen, and they saw that his face was like an angel. And this is how Acts chapter 7 starts off. It says, then the high priest asked Stephen, are these charges true? And to this he replied, brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham while he was still in Mesopotamia before he lived in Haran. And if you go back and look at chapter 7 all the way through, uh, uh, Stephen has an acid reflux moment because he begins to throw up everything that he's been meditating on. I know that some of y'all uh, uh, have been full and you're, you're full of a lot of things. Some of y'all are full of lies. Some of y'all are full of, of deceit. Some of y'all are full of some good things. Things, but some of y'all are full of, you fill in the blank there. But, but when, when, when Stephen's back was against the wall, we see that what was steeped inside of him was about to, to come out. I know that uh, one of the things that I, I wanted to do is I wanted to say, well, what are you eating? What are you 
eating. And, and I'm not just talking about uh, what are you eating in your food, but I got a picture here in my pantry. This is what's in my pantry. You'll see this picture. That'll pop up. That's what's in my pantry. What's in your fr- refrigerator? You can look inside of my refrigerator and you can see what type of food I have there. What's in, in my, uh, on your radio station? You can see uh, what, what radio station we're listening to. You can, what's on your telephone? How are you scrolling? What are you consuming? What's there? What are you following on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok? Who are you following? What is feeding you? What's on your television screen? What is it that you are full of? Because here is the issue that we as believers are having now even more than ever since we're disconnected. We don't have a church physically that we can go to. We're up to us to be able to turn on the YouTube. It's up to us to be able to do the daily devotional. It's up to us to be able to feed ourselves spiritually. And now that we are responsible for feeding ourselves, what are we eating? See, it's, it's, it's one thing to, to go to church on Sunday and you know that somebody's going to cook it up and you're going to make the effort to get there and you're going you're gonna to get there. But what about when you can sleep till 1 o'clock on a Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon? What about when, when you don't necessarily have to click on the, the YouTube channel or you don't have to go watch the Facebook message or, and nobody's over your shoulder and, and nobody's encouraging you and nobody's checking on you and nobody's here to help you with your spiritual growth? What are you eating? See, it's interesting that that nobody has to tell us to go to the pantry to get food out. Nobody has to tell us to go to the refrigerator. Nobody has to tell us to go to the store and bring the food home. Nobody has to tell us to turn on that radio station. Nobody has to tell us to wake up in the morning and start to, to scroll. Nobody has to tell us who to follow, and nobody has to tell us what we watch. But when it comes to the spiritual things, sometimes somebody has to tell us to do what the best thing that we need for us, but it's so difficult. See, some of y'all are a little round in, in some places because you, you're full of the things that are in your pantry. And you constantly tell yourself, you know what, I, I know during this COVID I have picked up some weight and I need to change my dietary uh, habits. I need to change some things. But the problem is, is that the food in the pantry is still the same. So although you may change up your eating habits and you may eat at 8 and you may eat at 12 or you may eat a, a big meal, if you're eating the same thing, you're going to continue to look the same. And so one of the things that, that, that we have to be careful of, and I want you to be able to check yourself today, is to say, what am I consuming? My wife, um, a couple of weeks ago, she shared this with me, and when we, it, was, it was a very emotional moment because she was talking about how she was struggling with her anxiety. And she was telling her friends, she was telling uh, her small group how, how she was dealing with this stuff because the news media was coming at her. Uh, uh, the, the group that even she was leading, they were having issues and problems were coming through. She was being saturated by so much stuff that was negative that it was controlling her mind because she was consuming the problems of the world. And sometimes when we're consuming the problems of the world, we'll have the weight of the world on our shoulders. And when the weight of the world is on our shoulders, it seems like it will crush us because we're filled with the world. But I'm praying today that you'll be full with with something new today, that God will change your diet, that God will give you a a, a new appetite, that he'll give you a new meal, that he'll give you something to feast on that will change your mind. See, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. And we can't go over in our lives and maybe read a devotional scripture once a week and then fill our lives with this junk and this mess that comes through on the radio and and this junk that comes through on our phone. We can't look at bodies that are glistening gold. We can't look at money and and consumed by, by power. We can't look at all of these things that are happening around us and expect for our spiritual lives to really be filled. Because the trick of the enemy is he wants you to be attracted to these things that you fill yourself up with all of these ideologies and all of these idols in life that now all you're focused on is money, all you're focused on is sex, all you're focused on is power, all you're focused on is love, all you're focused on are the things of the world. And the more we focus on those things, the less and less we can focus on the power and the love of Jesus Christ. And so just like this meal has been prepared for me, just like uh, the, the, the meat is good, when I ate it, it was good going down. And this may sound disgusting, but even with my acid reflux, it tastes even better coming back up. But Stephen, in this particular moment, he lays out how we should be when we're filled or full of something. Stephen is about to give a history lesson on what 
the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin has accused him of. This is what happens when you're filled with something, when it's time for you to be on trial, when it's time for you to to be able to step up to the call, when the anti-acids come in, when you get the acid reflux, when it happens to you, it's time for you to now show what you've been eating. Stephen's on trial. Everybody's looking at Stephen intently because he is uh, seemed to be have have uh, is mocking their tradition. He's mocking their faith. He's mocking their history. He's mocking everything about them. And God is 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 about to to show up because now Stephen is filled with the Holy Spirit. Did you know that the Holy Spirit will not live in unclean places? Did you know that? Did you know that if you are in a position or a place, you can still be saved, but the Holy Spirit not be active in your life? Because the Bible says that, that if, the, if the Holy Spirit is coming in, it only goes to places where it has full control. And if it does not have full control, then the Holy Spirit will be non-existent. And so you wonder why you're powerless and why you're helpless is because you fed yourself with all of this junk. And now when the anti-acid hits, now when the acid reflux comes, all you're doing is regurgitating what's going in. If, uh, if, 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 if bad news comes in, guess what's going to come out when your conversation? Bad news. If you're taking in bad relationship advice, then guess what's going to come out? Bad relationship advice. If I'm experiencing bad things in my family, then guess what I'm going to talk about? Bad issues with my family. If bad is consuming me and I'm consuming bad, then guess what? I can't expect anything better to come out of me. And so Stephen is on trial here and and Stephen goes in. He starts to talk about some of the heroes of faith. And he talks about Abraham. He says Abraham was the one that God chose, and he told him to leave the area where he was. He said, leave your father. Leave uh, your place of comfort. Take your wife. Take your things. Take your possessions and go to a place that's not your own. Abraham had to walk out of a place where he owned no land. He had no rights. He had no friends, but God gave him a promise. He was landless inheritantless, no friends, but God, all he gave him was a promise. And that was enough for Abraham to move. And, and he gave this promise over and over again. He told him that his descendants was going to be numerous as the sea. He told him his, his descendants were going to be as numerous as the sand on the beach. He told him that his uh, descendants were going to be as numerous as the stars in the sky. But he's walking out of a place of comfort, going to a place he knows nothing of because God gave him a word and he did it. And so in the process, God gave him uh, circumcision. And and when you read about Abraham, when you open up your book, uh, your Bibles to to, uh, Genesis chapter 13, and you continue to read, you'll see what God does with Abraham's life. See, when we start to meditate on things like that, then it changes our perspective and it changes our mind. Then he goes into Joseph. And he says this man Joseph uh, was, was one that, that was with his family, and God gave Joseph a dream, and his father gave him a coat, but his, his, his coat allowed the haters to come out. And the haters are sometimes in your own family, and so his family uh, uh, stages his death, and now uh, Joseph is sold into slavery, and he tells his dad, they tell their dad that, that Joseph was killed by an animal, and now Joseph has to go into Egypt, and he goes to this place where he doesn't know anybody, he's going in as a slave, he's going in with no friends, he's going in with no family, he's going into a new territory, but God is about to do a mighty and perfect work for him, and when you read through that, you start to meditate on that, you know what? My friends just left me, and so I'm meditating on what happened in the life of Joseph. I'm meditating on, on, on jealousy. I'm meditating on what he did in slavery. I'm, I'm meditating on what happens when fad, bad family dynamics happen. He's, he's teaching me how I should be able to respond in this day and age. He's, he's teaching me what I should do. And then we see that his dad, Jacob, on the other side, loses a child. His son, is not dead, but in his mind, he's dead. And, and Jacob feels some remorse because he sent, Jacob, he sent Joseph to go check on his brothers. And so now he's ripped away. So we got one sold out by his brothers. We got another one feeling like he's lost a child. Both of them are living. Nobody knows the truth. And you're living in the midst of a lie. How do you handle when the people that you thought loved you the most betray you and turn their back on you? And then we see Moses. Moses grew up in Pharaoh's house after being 
giving up for adoption down the sea to save his life, and he's raised in this Egyptian palace. And as he gets older, he walks outside the palace and he sees his people being mistreated by Egyptians and Moses Moses kills a man. And now Moses has fled Egypt and he's going to live on the backside of a mountain and he's living out there and he's herding cattle and he's, he's tending to his own business. Then he meets a man, he meets God on this burning bush and God wants him to go back into this place. How does he handle that? It's time to meditate on that. And then we see Moses in his insecurities and his, uh, uh, his uncomfortable state, and he's persistent and, 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 and trying to get out of what God has called him to do, that he makes up all type of excuses why he can't go. And then we see Aaron. Aaron is brought into the picture because Moses says that he can't speak very well, and so he has an excuse on why not to get active. And then we see Joshua. Joshua is the one that, that, that uh, after Moses goes back and he does his assignment, Joshua is the one that's a great warrior, and he's a, a part of this, this new generation, in there, and he comes in with, with faith and courage, and he leads people to defeat uh, the giants in their life to walk into the promised land. When you start to look at these stories, you'll start to feast on ways and benefits and answers to your questions. You are not going to find answers on Instagram. You will not find answers calling everybody. You will not find answers on 104.7 or 97.9 or 102. Those will not be the answers that are going to speak to you. But when you start to fill yourself up with the things that God gives you and you start to look at your personal problems, you start to look at your parental problems, you start to look at your relational problems, you start to look that you're struck with fear, you start to look at your addictions, you start to look at and feel purposelessness, you start to look at uh, the anger and the rage and you you start to look at your porn addiction and you start to look at your drug addiction and you start to look at these things and you say I need to be filled up with something else but this is this is this is what Stephen does he regurgitates this 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 information but I'm coming to tell you this because when he regurgitates this information this is what it does to your life so when he talks about Abraham he talks about new territories he talks about new uh, projects he talks about new relationships he talks about new problems and instead of running and quitting when the new challenges happen Abraham walks out on his father goes to a place and God allows him to thrive outside of his inheritance. So now when when Abraham is met with this acid reflux, when, when Stephen is met with this acid reflux, what comes out is what went what went in. Because he was, he was full, and when I'm, I'm reading about Abraham, I see that he is the father of faith, and I, I see that he stepped out on a promise. So now in my own meditation time, I don't give up when challenges hit. I can focus on the promise. Because many times we're, we're stuck in the process and, and we don't know how things are going to happen and, and what's going to happen when the kids go back to school and, and how am I going to be a homeschooler a teacher and I'm, I didn't even graduate from high school. How am I going to be able to, 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 to work and be able to, to teach my kids? What is that going to look like? And sometimes there's a mother right now, she's falling apart and she doesn't know how she's going to handle it. And there's a father saying, I don't know, we need to get the kids back into school. And somebody else is scared because they're trotting into new territory. But if you're full of faith like Abraham, then what will come out is is you'll know that God is going to supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. When you have faith and you're filled like Abraham, then you'll know that I'm going into an untried territory, but I believe that God is going to make a way out of no way because I'm believing in the promise that God said I shall live and not die. I'm believing on the promise that God is going to make for me. He's going to choose a path for me and not only only is he going to give me new land that I didn't have. He's going to show me things that I didn't even know. Some of y'all are still using wisdom from 2010. And God is trying to give you a fresh anointing. But what, what are you feasting on? What are you eating on? Is it a good diet? Is it, is it good food? Is it, is it something that's going to, to, to tickle your fancy? Is it something that's going to get your mind out of something? Because guess what? Acid reflux is coming. Acid reflux is the thing in your life that doesn't mix with your life. And at the point when acid reflux takes over, what went down is going to come back up. Somebody say, I'm full. I'm full. I am. I am full. I'm full. 
because Abraham has given me much purpose. He's given me much power. He's, he's given me direction that even though I'm in new territory, the same way that he touched Abraham is the same way that he's going to touch me. Now, Joseph, Joseph is, is, is one of those men that when I meditate on Joseph's life, when I, when I think about Joseph, I, I think that about uh, Joseph being a victim of hate and jealousy. Anybody ever been a victim of hate and jealousy by your own family? Anybody uh, been the, the, the black sheep? Anybody being sold out and, and, and can remember that, that uh, uh, you know what, my family, they're supposed to be here for me. They're supposed to look out for me, but they've turned their back on me. And some of you have been bitter for so long because you're mad that your mama cut you off. You're mad because your brother didn't give you that loan. You're mad because your sister kicked you out. You're mad because when you had the abortion, everybody turned their back on you. You're mad because uh, uh, you were the successful one, but nobody... Uh, uh, they look at you like, like you have uh, uh, mustard on your shirt or you got boogers in your nose and they, they look down on you and every time you, you come around them, they make you feel bad. If you are a victim of hate and jealousy, you can take this from, from Joseph. You can take some, 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 uh, some of the greens and the, and the yams from Joseph and you can eat on Joseph. And what we see that is when uh, Joseph is sold out by his brothers and his sisters, God is moving him to a position of elevation. And so, yes, you're the black sheep, but God is about to give you black power. Yes, you were the one that was cast out, but God, God is the one that you're going to be able to count on. See, what happened was, is Joseph had to move out of the place with his family to now be elevated. The elevation process was not as good as we would want it to be because when we walk into the palace, we want to go through the front door. But sometimes God will give you a back door blessing. So when, you, when you, you're in a position where you're, you're mad at your mom and you're mad at your family, you have to say, God, where are you pushing me to? Because sometimes God is pushing you into something so that he can push you through your destiny. So when your acid reflux is, is agitated and you want to cuss, fuss, and, and fight, remember what you ate and praise God because God is taking you to your purpose. Joseph would have never picked the path of being sold into slavery. But it was through the slavery that he had to go through. It was through Potiphar's wife that he had to go through. It was through the prisons that he had to go through. It was through the pain that he had to go through. It was through the cast out that he had to go through to now save his brothers and his father. Some of you had to leave so that you can come back and rescue the same people that hurt you. But we know that all things work together for the good of those who love Lord love God and a call according to his, his purpose. I want to I wanna talk about uh, a modern day testimony, and I, and I pray that Art would, uh, would allow me to, to speak about this. But, but Art uh, Wilson uh, was, was a man that joined the church when we first opened, and, and Art uh, was having some um, health issues as he was working for UPS, and it was very strenuous. And, they, you know, UPS, is, it's a dog-eat-dog. They talk bad to you. They cuss you out. They put a workhorse on you. They, they make you work late hours. They pull you away from your family. You're always gone. You're always doing logistics, and you're trying to take care of these things. And what happened was Art was in a position where his health was failing, passing out at work, had to, to, to uh, go to the hospital when he was uh, in Dallas because he had passed out and uh, came home and, and uh, he was disoriented and things were going on with his brain. And he was spending time in the hospital. And I remember going to visit Art and I said, well, Art, are you going to continue to live like this? What's going to change? And at that moment, Art started to think about how he wanted to, to open up a business. He wanted to do something different. He wanted to leave the prison that he was in. He wanted to leave uh, the, the place that he was. And so he went out and he, he, him and his wife, they opened up this business business called Rollies. And uh, Rollies was, was launched and it was going and it was gaining momentum, but then it hit a lull and, and they were struggling financially and, and it, was stressing, uh, it was stressing him out and he was trying to make budget and he was trying to move some things around and he was depleting his savings and, and the money in the household was going away. They had a kid going to college. They had another kid in sports and they were trying to take care of the family, but the business wasn't bringing in enough money to do that and he was struggling financially and he was dealing with all of these things, but then the death of a man happened. A man died, and, and the world changed, and, and 
uh, the black community came together and they started to share the black dollar with each other. And I remember in a season that he was like, I don't know how we're going to make it. I'm going to continue to do these things, to step out on faith. But then there was a travesty that happened. And then now I talked to him the other day. He said they're in the best month that they've ever had. They have made it through the dry season. And I say, you know what, Art, you know what it's like to have little and you know what it's like to have a lot. And that way you can be content and know that God is in the midst of all of it. And I'm thankful that, that God will bring us through seasons of our life, but it's those testimonies or the things that we have to feast on. Because no matter how broken your situation is right now, joy is coming on the other side. Stephen doesn't stop right there on, on uh, Joseph, but he talks about Jacob, and, and Jacob uh, is, is one that, that lost his, his family member. He, when the people that, that you love mistreated, uh, mistreated Jacob and they took his favorite son, they took this man that he loved, this one that he had bought this coat for, they took his son from, guess what, some of y'all have lost your children. You're in a position, you're in a custody battle right now, and your, your heart is aching. There is pain. You're, you're wondering, how is this thing going to work? You're going back and forth. It's not a good situation. It's not a good season. It's not a good thing. But I tell you like this, when that Joseph was taken from Jacob, Joseph then went on to do some things and change some things, and the very thing that he lost in one season was the same thing that saved his life in the next season. I believe that some of you that have lost your kids, some of you that are in custody battles, some of you that are in uh, this tension and friction, some of you have lost your children to death, some of you lost your children to COVID, but I believe that the very thing that you've lost is going to be the very same thing that saves your life. See, when you can believe God, when you can feast on the things of God like that, it changes you because you know that I am full on the promises of God. Somebody type that in. The thing I lost will save me. The thing I lost will save me. Because I believe that even though you go through death and destruction, God's promise never falls void, it never returns void, it never falls on death. It always leads to provision in the next life. And so then Stephen, he was eating again on Moses. And when he takes a bite out of Moses, Moses was scared. God called Moses. He said, Moses, I need you to, to go back to the place where you killed a man. And I'm talking to somebody right now that has a bad past. You was a drug addict. You, you may have murdered somebody. You stole money from your family. You may have womanized. You may have manized. You've, you've cheated on folks. You've cheated on your taxes. You've built businesses and stole money from people. You've lived in a foul lifestyle. People found you out. You've been fired from your job, and you've escaped. You left your family. You left everything because you were embarrassed, and you didn't believe that they would ever listen to you. You didn't believe that they would ever receive you again. And I'm coming to tell somebody right now that it is your background, it is your past that's going to qualify you to go rescue somebody in the future. Yeah, everything looked, looked bad. It looked like you had a bad reputation, and God is calling you back to that very place that you left because he's now going to work a miracle in the midst of your favor. And so some of us have skeletons. We've got old people that we used to mess with, and we've got some relationships that have been broken, and, and we've left some kids, and we hadn't talked to our kids in 20 years. But God is saying, I'm taking you back to the place that you left because I am going to do a new thing. And see, when we start to feast on Moses, Moses was scared to go back. He said, I, 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 you can't tell me to, I, I got a stuttering problem. And God says, don't worry about it. I'll bring your brother Aaron, bring your, uh, your, phone, your, your, your kinfolk along with you. And as he brings Aaron along with them, they go back and they speak to the Pharaoh. And over this long expanse of time and periods and, and plagues and destruction, God allows this one man who had a bad past, who had a stuttering problem and a speech impediment to lead millions of people out of slavery, to lead millions of people out of captivity. He uses the broken people, the people with a bad past, the bad people. That, 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 that have a history and a background and he uses this man to now release him into the destiny. So don't allow what happened on yesterday to stop you from going forward tomorrow. Remember that God chose you because of your past and your past will be your past to the palace. I'll say that again. Remember that God chose you because of your past and your past will be your past 
to the palace. And so we see Aaron, who's a help meet. We see Aaron, who is uh, 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 the help meet for a national defeat. And then we see Joshua. Joshua, who comes on the scene, and he's, he's been working diligently under Moses and Aaron, and he's been fighting the battles, and he's been fighting the wars, and God gives him this, this word. He says, be strong and courageous. And so Isaiah 41.10 says it this way. It says, so do not fear. For I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And so when we know that that we don't have to fear what's going to happen next week when we go back to work. We don't have to fear when we have to go back to school. We don't have to fear what's coming around the corner. We don't have to fear August or September. We don't have to fear the rest of 2020, even though we've been hit with disease, even though we've been hit with uh, 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 things that we don't even know how to fight, even though we've been hit with job loss, even though we've been hit with poverty, even though we've been hit with distress. I'm telling you right now that when you get into the Word of God, you'll begin to be filled up on the inside, and when that acid reflux comes out, you'll You'll be able to birth praises. You'll be able to throw up the goodness of God, and you'll be able to release what's on the inside of you. And so one of the things that people do is when you're in the car and you're, you're dealing with certain things, and this brown paper bag simplifies the bag that you have, and, and that acid reflux comes up, and you get a phone call, and somebody is, uh, is against you, or you get somebody cussing you out on the other side. And before you cuss them out, I want you to just breathe in your bag, and when you throw up, I want you to throw up what you've been meditating on. See, some of y'all have been meditating on on your past and your history and your mama was a great cusser and your daddy was a great cusser and and you grew up in an environment where you hackled each other and you joned on each other and you talked bad about each other and now when somebody comes for you, you feel like you got to come back at them. But I promise you, when you start to change your diet, you'll start to throw up the praises of God. You'll start to throw up the promises of God. You'll say, you know what? Just like you, my family, you sold me out. Don't worry because since you sold me out, I'm on my way to the palace. But guess what? I'm not going to repay evil for evil. I'm going to bless you even though you've cursed me. I'm going to break this generational curse. I'm about to break out of this mantra. I'm about to break out of this prison. I know what you did was was for evil and you meant to harm me, but I believe that God is saying that everything that is done to me is done for me and all things are going to work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And so when I think about me activating and being full. When I think about stepping up and stepping out, I, th- I can think about Jesus who was then threw up on the cross. And in those moments of his hands being nailed to the cross, standing in the balance, standing in the midst of pain, standing in the midst of agony, surrounded by his enemies, surrounded by the people that want to cause him pain, surrounded by people that hated him. He threw up something. And the scripture told him that, says that, I'm in the worst situation of my life. I want to rain down fire on all of these people. I want to kill all of these people. I want to get out and get even with all of these people. But since he had been filled with the Holy Spirit, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It takes you to be filled with something on the inside for you not to want to pay back evil for evil, but it only happens when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Even in the midst of his pain and agony, even in the midst of his enemies and his haters, even in the midst of his powerlessness, he turns to the thief and he tells him, today you will be with me in paradise. How is it that you've had everything taken away from you, but you still got something to give? How is it that you're in the worst predicament of your life, and you're talking about forgiveness and bringing somebody along with you and purposes? How is it? 
that when you're thrown up on the cross, enemies all around, in between pain and agony, that you can look up to the Father in heaven and say, Father, I commit my spirit into your hands. How is it that when I'm taking the piercings in the side, the nails in the feet, crown of thorns on my head, that I can say that this has to happen in order for me to show the world victory. Your pain that you're dealing with right now, the anxiety that you're dealing with, all anxiety is, is that you're eating from the wrong plate. Some of y'all need to go to your kitchens and throw some of that stuff out. Some of you need to call your cable company and cut the cable. Some of y'all need to take the TVs off the wall. Some of y'all need to go in the radio and ban it from certain stations. Some of y'all need to go and cut out phone conversations with certain people because it's time for you to change your diet. Because in this season, you need to be filled so that the Holy Spirit can fill you with His power. When you meditate, on the Word of God day and night. It changes you. It changes you. It changes you. And so when we talk about being full, Stephen, Stephen was full. And so when he was put on trial, he began to throw up the history. And as he threw up the history, his story didn't end the way that we would want to end. After Stephen shocked him, and told them that they were actually wrong and what they believed and what they did. They stoned Stephen and they killed him. But I would rather live and die for Christ than to live with regret of the rejection in life. Peter rejected Christ. He rejected him. They said, do you know this guy? He says, I, I, I don't know the guy. He, he denounced him. He he went against them. But I tell you this one thing, after that happened, Peter never did it again. The Peter that we see in the Gospels is not the same Peter that we see in Acts. We saw a very immature Peter in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, but the same Peter that was in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John is not the same Peter that we see in Acts. Because Peter changed and he grew. His mindset changed. The way that he saw things change, and it was because he started to meditate and eat on the things of God. I'm praying today that you change your diet, that you allow yourself to be filled with the power of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Because when the Spirit fills you up, when acid reflux hits you, you'll only be able to throw up what's inside of you. I'm throwing up love in this season. I'm throwing up promises in this season. I'm throwing up favor in this season. I'm throwing up strength in this season. I'm throwing up victory in this season. I'm throwing up peace in this season. I'm throwing up forgiveness in this season. I'm throwing up deliverance in this season. I'm throwing up prosperity in this season. I'm throwing up the good things of God in this season. This is my winning season. I am throwing up the goodness of God. And no matter how you come at me, devil, no matter how you send your demonic forces to change my life, I promise you that you won't get me to come back and look like you, but I'll come out shining like Stephen. It says, the Bible says that Stephen looked up into the heavens and his face began to glow because he was filled with the Holy Spirit and as he began to go it was like his body left and he went directly to be with the Father in heaven I'm praying right now that that God gives you a peace that passes all understanding that you begin to meditate on the things of God that you can leave and say you know what I am fool. I'm full. I'm full. I'm full. Father, we thank you, Father, that you're filling us up. 
I thank you right now, Father, that you're allowing the digestive system, Father, to, to release everything that is wasteful inside of me. That you will fill the hearts and the minds of those, the listeners and the viewers. That they will be filled with the Spirit. That when acid reflux comes in the form of anger, when it comes in the form of pride, when it comes in the form of lust, when it comes in the form of disappointments, when it comes in the form of powerlessness, that we will be able to say, I'm filled. I'm filled. I'm filled. You can't get to me today, Satan, because I'm filled. You can't touch me today. I, I got a bad phone call, but I'm filled. And so fill Show us up, God. Fill me. Face. Fill me up. I Type that down below. Say, fill me up. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. I fill me up. Fill me up, Father. Your glory. So that I can take on any challenge that tomorrow may bring. To because I'm full in the secret of the Word of God. Show me in Jesus' name. Face. Hey, you may be someone that's joining in with us for the first time today. Show Welcome to Inspiration Church. I pray that you get filled on the inside, I want to see that it changes everything on the outside of you. This is your first time joining us. You say, you know what? I, I need to get a, a field. I need to, I need to get this feeling of the Holy Spirit. Text us at 281-810-6535 and say, fill me up. And we'll have some of our prayer counselors call you, connect with you to be able to lead you through the steps of being filled. The first way that you can be filled is that you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. You have to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And when you do that, God is saying, I'm going to give you salvation. And the next step is being filled. And if that's, just, if that's you, just put a little hand emoji up. Say, I'm, I need that. I need that. The second thing is, You've been eating from the wrong plate for a long time. Matter of fact, you've been a Christian, but your diet hadn't changed. You still listen to the same garbage. You still listen to the same pollution. You still watch the same. And I just, I'm here to tell you right now that if you do the same thing, you're going to get the same results. You're going to be frustrated because you know there's a better life, but you haven't made the necessary changes to get there. God's will for you is for you to win. His will for you is for you to be victorious over everything that's in your life. And that's why you must meditate on the Word of God. And the third thing is, maybe you need a church a place, a people to connect with you. We want to open up our doors, open up our hearts, open up our arms at Inspiration Church. We ask you to come in and be a part. Because it's here, it's in this place. It's on this, 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 this place that God is sending you to be activated. It's time for us to move in such a way that God can use us because we're filled with the Holy Spirit. We're active. We've got the position, we've got the posture. And now we've got the right diet because we're filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm praying that God continues to bless you. I'm praying that God continues to fill you. I'm praying that God continues to anoint you. I'm praying that God continues to give you wisdom. I'm praying that God continues to give you answers. I'm praying that God opens up new avenues. I'm praying that you don't go back into last week, but you go into this new week fresh and ready to watch God do a new thing. May God bless you. May God keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May his face turn towards you. And may he give you peace. In Jesus' name. God bless you guys. And remember to love, live, and leave. Though I cried out before, still I want more. I want to see your As we talk about being full, it's Communion Sunday. And we know that there's a table that happened in the upper room right before Jesus was about to die. And he has his haters at the table, Judas, 
He's got the one he loved at the table. He's got the one that doubted him at the table. He's got the one that sold him out at the table. He's got a table full of personalities and all types of things. But he sits at this table and he breaks bread because they're feasting. And the Bible says that he'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And sometimes your frenemies, because they're afraid one day and the enemy the next. But he says, do this in remembrance of me. They didn't know exactly what was going to happen. He told them, but they didn't know how it was going to play out. But now we know that his bones were broken and he was bruised for our iniquities. And so since we have iniquities and sin, let us pray. Father, I'm praying right now, Father, for the forgiveness of sins. That we thought that there was a way that seemed right to us. But, Father, we see that it's headed towards destruction. And so, Father, right now, Father, we say sorry and we ask you to release us from the sin trap, from guilt, from pain and defeat. And as we eat of your body and drink of your cup, that you give us a renewed spirit. Heal our bodies and our minds and free us from all impurities. Father, you said if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So, Father, do it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you take your bread, this is the body broken for you, take and eat. The Bible says this is the blood that was shed for you. Take and drink. Father, we thank you that you didn't step away from the hard things that you had to face. Father, we thank you that you went forward and finished the whole process. I thank you that you didn't give up on us, but you died for us and you resurrected. So, Father, we pray as you taught us to pray. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God bless you. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see your glory. I want to live in the secret place. Show me your face. Man, thank you, Pastor Carlos, so much for that wonderful, inspiring message. Were you inspired by that message? Extremely inspired. It's Straight through my body. Straight through your body. If you were inspired by that message, hey, if you're watching us live right now, leave us a comment. What did you get from that message? What inspired you from that message? What can you do and take from that message and move forward into your life? 
church is not just about listening to the word of God, but it's also about applying the word of God. Oftentimes, most theologians will tell you the highest form of knowledge is the application of knowledge. It's not to just know and regurgitate knowledge, it is to actually apply it to your life. So what Pastor Carlos spoke about today was not only inspiring, but it is something that you can use in your life. Thank you very much, Pastor Carlos, Thank for that you. message. It is offering time. Now, if you haven't given online uh, as of yet, or you haven't given already, there are a number of ways that you can give to Inspiration Church and help to continue the ministry of Jesus Christ through Inspiration Church. Those three ways are one, through our Cash App. Cash App. Two, through our website. Through the website. Through the website. And three, through Fellowship One Go. Fellowship One Go. Don't forget it. Three ways to give. Take advantage. Now, another thing that you can do is you can actually communicate with other people from the church on the website. There's a lot of things you can do on there, such as talking to other peers, keeping up with news and what's happening with the church, and also buying merch. Church merch. You can buy that on the website. So some of the shirts you'll see different uh, performers in. And our big eye shirts, go online, check that perch mer church perch, the church merch <laughs> <laughs> online. Um, we'd also uh, like to talk about our social media. So we are uh, uh, available on all platforms. So you'll find us on Instagram. 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 You'll find us on the website. On the website. That's another, I just talked about yeah, that one. Yeah, because he just said that. Yeah. You can find us on YouTube. 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 You're watching this on YouTube right YouTube, now, aren't you? Right, right. You can find us on Facebook. Facebook. My Facebook. grandma uses that one a lot. Everybody's grandma is on Facebook. <laughs> like, like, happy face, love, all of that good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so, uh, Jaden, tell us a little bit about um, you, what you miss about your church family. My church family, mostly the energy that it all just brings, the environment that we had at church. It's not the same as it is online, you know? What about you, Pastor Chris? You know what? I miss all of my youth. I miss Jaden's. I miss... Everyone, I don't want to start naming names because then somebody's going to be like, you left me out, Pastor Chris. But I miss all of them. I miss the same energy. I miss the little ones running around. I miss the young ones, the older ones giving me a hard time uh, about my messages on Sunday. Uh, so <laughs> uh, I miss our, our uh, family all together. Um, so as we transition and we've had such an extraordinary service this Sunday, um, I'd like to uh, offer us uh, into prayer. Or take us into prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we just thank you for this day. Your word in Psalms says that this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we are glad in it, Father, because first of all, in the midst of a pandemic, if we're watching this message this morning, we know that we are alive. Father God, to be alive in this day and age is not only a blessing, Father God, it is also an inspiration, Father God. It's an inspiration to have a pastor, Pastor Carlos, be before us every Sunday to, to put forth the word of God. That we know that the word of God is living, that it is breathing every day, breathing into us inspiration, breathing into us life, breathing into us a, a new attitude, Father God. We just thank you for our friends and our family members, Father, that before this pandemic we may have not taken for granted but we do not take them for granted now we thank you for our moms for our fathers for our sisters our brothers our cousins our siblings our guardians our friends our best friends our teachers our educators our first responders father we thank you for our church community we thank you for the 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 media teams that work the church community we thank you for the ushers that invited us into service father we just thank you for everything that you have given us uh, we thank you for life, Father God. You you breathe it into us, the breath of life, Father God, and we are ever thankful for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to point out a thing that Pastor Chris said. Um, even if you're not there with your family, you can just shoot them a text. It's not Thanksgiving, but you can always thank, you can always be thankful for somebody. So just let them know that you love them. Man, I didn't know he was going to go there. That was good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Jaden, for that message. Of course. That was great. That was great. And so as we depart, we just want to tell you, don't forget to love, live, live and, and lead. lead.